two titans of American firearm manufacturing, Mossberg and Remington, producers of two of the most prolific, rugged, and reliable shotguns that the world has ever seen. They are, of course, Mossberg's 500 and 590 families and Remington's 870. Between them, these two shotguns have been cranked out in numbers totaling tens of millions. Each has stalwart, diehard fans and scathing critics, and the rivalry between the two groups nearly eclipses anything that can be ginned up by competing pro sports teams. You rarely encounter such impassioned and oratorical pronouncements about the merits and flaws of guns as you will among the users of these two fine shotguns. The question is, which one is superior? Is one superior? If you were a new prospective buyer, which one is the best choice? In this video, I will strive to answer that question for inquiring minds. I have plenty of experience with both guns, both my own and students' guns. Whatever your intended purpose, be it home defense, law enforcement duty, deer hunting, or something else, you'll wind up with a pump-action shotgun that is right for you. So grab your popcorn and a box of shells and dig in. Family Relations In order to fairly assess these two scatterguns supreme against one another, you must understand the differences between the models and their variants. Mossberg has the 500 and 590, and furthermore, the 590A1. Remington's 870 are all one big happy family, but there are several trims that feature greater or lesser quality depending on how they were made. While these differences in model or variant make absolutely no difference in the manual of arms for either family, they do determine what accessory or replacement parts you can fit to the gun. Mossberg models 500 and 590. Differences. The Mossberg 500 and 590 are essentially the same action, but they do have some important design differences you need to be aware of. The 590 and 590A1 are basically identical, only the A1 has some heavy-duty upgrades. Once more, there are no manual of arms differences between any of them, but which one you choose will make a difference when it comes time to choose add-on parts and other accessories, particularly magazine tube extensions and some forends. The most obvious difference between the 500 and 590 is in the way the barrel secures to the magazine tube. The Model 500 features a lug with a captive screw that is fastened to a hole on the end of the magazine tube. The 590 uses the more common hoop-shaped lug that is clamped in place by screwing on the detachable magazine cap. Bottom line up front. On the 500, you're stuck with the magazine capacity conferred by the mag tube itself and ergo the corresponding barrel length. Increasing the capacity means a new mag tube and new barrel. This means much more money than a simple screw-on magazine extension. The 590, as you probably guessed, only needs the aforementioned magazine extension. No new barrel required. Additionally, a revised magazine follower in the 590 allows one extra shell than the same length of magazine tube on a 500. Also, 590s come equipped with a bayonet lug size for U.S. military standard bayonets. Nice to know it's there if you want to get crazy, I guess. The sum of these differences may not add up to much for some users, but the 590 definitely has an advantage when it comes time to increase capacity. Heavy Duty 590 versus 590A1 Simply, the 590A1 is the heavy duty and U.S. military adopted version of the gun. The most noticeable upgrade is the very beefy very heavy barrel. This thicker barrel may require model-specific forends or minor fitting to adapt standards 590 forends. Additionally, the safety switch and trigger housing are also steel instead of plastic. The 590A1 retains the bayonet lug from the regular 590. The result is a heavy shotgun that can withstand truly abusive handling and keep running. The weight difference is noticeable, but compared to the 590, is if you desire the most rugged gun in Mossberg's broad lineup, the 590A1 is the undeniable choice. The Big Green Family Remington's 870 Variations The 870 has been produced in a bewildering array of variants over the years, but discounting all the one-off variations, special editions, and less permanent models, you can get an 870 in one of several major trims, these being the Express, Tactical, Wingmaster, and police versions. The differences between these models is not as obvious to the uninitiated as the difference between the Mossberg clan. While these varying models do usually feature different options, 
The heart and soul of each action are the same. Each features a steel receiver, but what is not the same is the level of fitment, finish, and small component quality that goes into each. The express and tactical trims are mostly identical on this totem pole, and both occupy the lowest end of the strata. Machining and finishing are both far rougher than higher grades. The actual finish applied to these guns is a cheap black coating. Essential small parts are MIM, not machined, and fitted from bar stock. Springs of all kinds are lower quality than the higher end 870s. Newer production Express and Tactical 870s have plastic trigger guards. All around, quality control and assurance are only average on this grade of shotgun. The Wingmaster and the Police models both feature a far higher level of quality components, assembly and finishing. The Police model is actually made in an entirely separate area of the factory. Police guns are typically finished in a corrosion-resistant metal coating, and the Wingmasters are often blued. Of the two, you can expect to get a Wingmaster with a very long barrel and a short magazine tube, necessitating you swap both for defensive purposes. Unless a long, unwieldy, and three-shot pump shotgun appeals to you for self-defense. Okay, now that we have addressed the major differences between our two contestants, we can start pitting them against each other. Action. One major difference between Mossberg and Remington shotguns is the metal comprising the receiver. Remingtons are all steel. Mossbergs are aluminum. Both are still suited to shoot a full-time diet of full-power 12-gauge, be it buckshot or slugs. The lockup of bolt to barrel in each is steel on steel, and otherwise, both shotguns have proven themselves time and time again in all manner of environments, so there is no innate advantage to one over the other. The 500, 590, and 870 both feature dual steel action bars for sure operation to prevent bending. The designs differ in their attachment to the forend and each other. Mossberg bars are secured by pressed pins to a separate slide assembly. The Remington action bars and slide are unified and one piece. The one piece Remington unit does lend itself to that shotgun's overall smooth feel when running the action where the Mossbergs often have a slight rattle and feel a little sloppy, but this loose feeling does nothing to affect reliability. The Mossberg unit is easier and cheaper to service when required, as a defective or worn action bar can simply be swapped out for a new one, without the need to buy a more expensive one-piece unit. All in all, so far as feeling is concerned, Remington is the clear winner here. Quick, smoother, and a joy to run. An enhanced and tuned Remington action can hardly be beaten among pump shotguns, save perhaps by a clicked up Winchester. Two, as time goes on and the gun wears in, Mossbergs often feel even looser and sloppier. This may not affect serviceability one iota, but it remains. Where the Mossberg starts to beat the Remington is in the internals. The 870's dinky single extractor does nothing to inspire confidence next to its competition, chunky, dual extractor claws. What's worse is the Remington extractor may be a MIM part, unless you get a Wingmaster or police model. Look also at the ejectors. Mossberg 500 590s are screwed in and easy to replace. For some godforsaken reason, Remington is still utilizing riveted in ejectors. The shell stops retaining rounds in the magazine tubes are similarly easy to replace on the Mossberg models, but semi-permanently staked in on the Remingtons. This policy of confounding serviceability continues with Remington's soldered-on magazine tube. 500s and 590s are both screwed in. This all adds up to Mossberg shotguns being considerably easy to work on with the right tools and just a little know-how. Remington shotguns are no picnic for anything beyond routine maintenance. Controls. One of the biggest tipping points for prospective purchasers of these two fine guns is the control setup. Both Mossbergs have the safety situated on the tang, or hump at the back of the receiver, pressed forward for fire and backward for safety. This is an excellent design and totally ambidextrous, but one that does not work well with pistol grips if you prefer one on your scattergun. This is because it would mandate either freakishly long thumbs to reach while retaining your firing grip, or breaking the firing grip completely to actuate the safety. All 870s have their safeties located immediately to the rear of the trigger. Pressing the safety from right to left is fire. The opposite is safe. Compared to the Mossberg, the safety works great with any kind of stock, 
but it is not the most intuitive for left-handed users. The final control, the slide release, is also different. Remington uses a blade-like lever that extends just beyond the trigger guard on the left side of it, and this is pulled rearward to release the forend when locked. Mossberg 500-590 releases are immediately behind the trigger on the left side, tucked between the bottom of the receiver and the trigger assembly, and are pressed up to release. Either works just fine for shooters of either hand, so no advantage there. Perks, flaws, and other quirks. Both of these shotguns are enormously massively popular, with millions and millions produced and in circulation. OEM and third-party manufacturer of parts, enhancements, and accessories is nothing shy of incredible and will not be slowing for the foreseeable future. You can get additional ammo caddies, optic mounts, new furniture, lights, lasers, barrels, extended controls, sling mounts, and far more. As discussed earlier, pistol grip stocks are not a great idea on Mossbergs due to the safety location. This is not something that is impossible to overcome, but your body works the way it works. Having to come off the grip entirely to run a safety versus it being located ergonomically and conveniently under your thumb with a standard stock is just not a worthwhile trade. If you must have a pistol grip, consider the Remington 870. Now a biggie. Since Remington's recent financial woes and bankruptcy, not to mention their acquisition by another uncaring conglomerate way back in 07, their quality issues and general decline of their guns has been the subject of much talk in the gun sphere. Reports of the low-end Remingtons having very rough actions, parts breakages, and general jankiness are manifold. If one cannot or is unwilling to seek out an older pre-07 Remington, caveat emptor. With so many in circulation though, it will be a small task to find a used police or wingmaster model, and the money you save will go far toward tuning up a wingmaster. Mossberg has not been entirely free of QCQA issues over the years, but has never seen a dip in quality like Remington has. This has nothing to do with the designs of either shotgun, per se, and every company can have high times and low over the course of its life. It just so happens the beloved Big Green is currently a shadow of its former self. Lastly, both shotguns can be greatly improved upon by tuning and the careful attention of a skilled gunsmith. But between the two, the Remington action can be taken farther than the Mossberg 500 or 590. The verdict. Both families of these quintessential American firearms are rugged, reliable, and durable on the whole. Either can admirably perform in a self-defense, hunting, or survival role. While each has its own pros and cons, and each certainly has its own rabid fan base, neither one is the clear and uncontested champion, and neither is a dog. Choose whichever one has the most features you like, and be confident that you're choosing an excellent pump shotgun. Please share with us in the comments which model you prefer and why. Thank you for watching the video. That's a wrap for this one. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and stay tuned for our future videos by subscribing to our channel. We'll catch you in the next one.